Jean Buzereau, producer of the special DVD edition of Taxi Driver. While we tried to include all the greatest stories in the documentary, uh, there were a, a few interesting anecdotes that just simply didn't make it. So uh, I thought it would be interesting to share some of them with you over this portrait gallery. Uh, in talking to Paul Schrader, I asked him where he got the names for the characters in the film. So beginning with Travis Bickle, uh, Paul Schrader explained that Travis Bickle is a mixture of the poetic and the harsh. Travis comes from travel, he is a wanderer, and Bickle is the harsh and pleasant sound. And there was a radio show, in fact, uh, with a fighting couple called the Bickersons, and so Bickle comes from Bicker. For Wizard, the character played by Peter Boyle, well, that was just a taxi driver nickname, something to evoke the fact that um, Wizard was like an older but wise man. The name Betsy, the character played by Sybil Shepherd, well, that was the name of a girlfriend that Paul Schrader knew in the ninth grade. Iris, the name for Jodie Foster's character, uh, that was meant to be an archaic name, something from another era. Paul Schrader said that he wanted a 19th uh, century name. Iris, Paul Schrader explained, somehow reflects as well the origins of cinema. Uh, an Irish shot is a technical movie term. But basically, Paul Schrader wanted to juxtapose an old-fashioned kind of flower onto the gritty reality of the character. Sport, now that's the Harvey Keitel character, uh, was just a street name that felt timely and perfect for the role. Finally, the name Palantine for the presidential candidate. Well, that came from the Palantine Hill in Rome and uh, the idea of an old world, an ancient culture which has been destroyed. Now, it's very interesting to read the screenplay uh, of Taxi Driver by Paul Schrader uh, because he wrote it in chapters. Uh, the story is episodic and Paul Schrader wanted to accentuate uh, the sense of randomness. So, so basically, you have titles like Travis gets a job, we meet Betsy, Travis gets organized, the slaughter, etc. And the script itself opens with a quote by Thomas Wolfe, the American novelist. Um, he had written an essay entitled God's Lonely Man. Now, according to Paul Schrader, Wolfe was one of those morose intellectual southerners. And uh, he had written about loneliness, and at the time that Paul Schrader was doing the script for Taxi Driver, he was in the grips of that feeling himself. So the quote basically struck home for him. And um, in fact, at one point in the film, Travis Bickle uh, quotes Thomas Wolfe and says, I'm God's lonely man. Martin Scorsese spoke a little more about composer Bernard Herrmann uh, in his interview. He explained that he took a trip to Paris in 1968 and went to the French Cinémathèque the night that French uh, director François Truffaut was introducing his movie The Bride Wore Black, starring Jean Moreau. Scorsese remembers uh, that um, François Truffaut introduced his new film and uh, discussed Marnie, Alfred Hitchcock's Marnie, uh, which was shown right after The Bride Wore Black that same night. Both films, Marnie and The Bride War Black, were scored by Bernard Herrmann. In fact, Marnie is the last movie that Herrmann scored for Alfred Hitchcock. Scorsese uh, did not speak French at the time or understood very little of it, so he basically just listened to four hours of score by Bernard Herrmann, and he was very affected by the music in both, uh, in both movies. So years later, when uh, he made Taxi Driver, Marty Scorsese decided to hire Bernard Herrmann uh, for the score. Uh, Marty Scorsese mentioned a very interesting story in that he had a similar experience when he saw the movie Mishima by Paul Schrader. He loved the score in that picture by Philip Glass. So several years later, he hired Philip Glass to score his movie Kundun. In talking to Robert De Niro, I mentioned a story I had heard many times, which was, in preparation for Taxi Driver, Robert De Niro became a cab driver. Now, that part of the story is true. Uh, but I had heard that one night a passenger recognized him uh, and said, wait a minute, you just won an Oscar for Godfather Part II and you're driving a cab? Well, when I mentioned that story, uh, Robert De Niro kind of smiled and said that, yes, indeed, uh, some guy had recognized him one night, but that's about it. So the rest of the story was sort of a, a legend. Somebody made it up.
Uh, an interesting bit uh, about Robert De Niro was uh, the scene when he shoots Harvey Keitel in the movie. Instead of running away from the scene of the crime, which would have been, you know, like the obvious thing to do, uh, Travis sort of walks around and sits down on the steps of the building. Well, that bit apparently came out of research that Robert De Niro had done about killers, and it was improvised um, on the set. I asked uh, Jodie Foster what she felt might have happened to Iris, the character she played in Taxi Driver, after the end of the movie, what happens to her beyond the end of the movie. And Jodie Foster says this, and I'm quoting here, I'm just one of those people who doesn't really believe that people change. Iris probably had an incredibly hard life. Travis Bickle's hope was that she would be redeemed by this horrible experience and that she would uh, live a fantasy from then on. But Jodie Foster says, as we all know, those things just don't happen. I got one last story from Paul Schrader, uh, who in fact never expected the film to be a hit. Uh, he had made a bet with Charlie Powell, the head of marketing at Columbia Pictures um, at the time of the movie, about how much the movie would make at the box office. So the night before the film came out, Paul Schrader, Marty Scorsese, and their producers, Michael Phillips and Julia Phillips, had dinner in New York. And basically they said to one another, whatever happens tomorrow, we made a good film and we're proud of it. So the next day, Paul Schrader overslept, who woke up in a hurry and dashed off to the movie theater. And there was a show at noon, and uh, he got there about 10 to noon. And there was this huge line outside the movie theater. So, of course, immediately Paul Schrader thought something is wrong. But in fact, that was the line for the 2 o'clock show. The noon show was just completely sold out. So Paul Schrader ran inside the theater where the movie was beginning, and uh, people just literally started applauding when the title Taxi Driver came up on the screen. And Paul Schrader compared this experience to being struck with an electric current. Marty Scorsese, Julia Phillips, and Michael Phillips, and Paul Schrader just basically sat in the back of the theater, realizing that they had touched a nerve. Even before the story began, the audience had already embraced the movie. Well, Taxi Driver uh, received La Palme d'Or, which is the highest honor at the Cannes Film Festival, in 1976. I lived in France at the time uh, the movie uh, received the prize, and at the time the movie came out, and I remember uh, the movie being a complete phenomenon in Europe. I mean, it was really huge. And it was very frustrating because uh, the film was restricted to anyone under 18. We could not go see the movie unless we were 18. And uh, so many of us film buffs at the time just couldn't see it until we became of age. And uh, it's kind of ironic that in America, the movie uh, struggled to get an R rating instead of an X rating, which is kind of the equivalent that we got in France. Taxi Driver uh, received several Oscar nominations, Best Picture, Best Actor for Robert De Niro, Best Supporting Actress for Jodie Foster, and Best Music for Bernard Herrmann. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the documentary and those additional uh, little stories. And I'm Laurent Buzero for the special edition of Taxi Driver. Thank you.